Alaska is not always easy to access. So you can still get a feeling of being the first person to place your foot on that piece of tundra or the first person to cradle that fish in your hand. That's really what the sport fishing industry is about, giving people a taste of something that they can't have full time. I'm Nancy Morris Lyon and I'm the lead instructor for the Bristol Bay Fly Fishing and Guide Academy. I'm gonna put up assignments for tomorrow. This academy takes local young adults who are interested in getting into the sport fishing industry in some form and allows them to have a week experience learning how to fly fish, tie flies, cast a fly line, as well as learn customer service skills and uh, conservation skills and basically the mentality around that surrounds the sport fishing industry. If it applies to fly fishing, they learn it. If you need any dry flies, mice patterns, leeches, smolts. Then we let them put what they've got to work. So client day is essentially the final exam of the Guide Academy. So all week we've been teaching them how to fly fish. We've taught them about customer service, safety, and today they'll put all those new skills to the test and they'll be expected to guide a member of the community that they've never met before for a safe and fun day out on the water. It's a good day out. We're, we're going to be catching some rainbows. It's all free to the students, yep it is. And uh, it's well paid off the minute I see one of them out on the river fishing while I'm out there guiding during the summer, it's awesome. They are absolutely uniquely qualified to be the next generation of guides. They were born and raised here. They know the stories from their ancestors. They can tell you why the caribou migrate, where they migrate, when they migrate, what, when, when the seals are gonna be coming through. Th those are all things that it takes a lifetime of living here to learn. And uh, you know, when you have guides coming from the lower 48, even though they're marvelous and very knowledgeable about fly fishing, they have a whole lot to learn about the area. The thing is, I never had that idea of becoming a fly fishing guide when I was a child. You know, I, I grew up commercial fishing. I mean, everyone commercial fishes, and it's not, it's not even a question. So once I was introduced to the academy, it kind of created that dream of, oh, you know, there's something different. I, you know, this is awesome. I want to come out here and be able to fish every day with new people. So now, now that it's actually happening, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, after I came here, I fell in love with fishing and everything that goes into a lodge, like the management, um, hospitality, everything like that. I wouldn't want to be in an office or anything. <laughs> well, being like one of the three girls at the academy, it was kind of cool because you could just try to keep up with the boys too. And it wasn't that hard. Learning that I get to fly out to all these remote places in a place I love and being able to help people catch trophy fish that a lot of people in the world don't get to do is just something I find amazing. This class, this particular one, the 10th anniversary class, is just an example of how incredibly well trained these guys are. Uh, th these are remarkable young people. At first, I just wanted everybody to share my passion for the sport, but then I realized very, very quickly what I was actually teaching the kids and the knowledge I was giving them was giving them multiple opportunities in an industry that's growing everywhere in the world. I would say there's another element that is important as well, and it's the cultural shift that has occurred to allow or, or embrace the notion of catch and release fishing. Catch and release fishing was a concept that was foreign to people and, and as little as two generations ago, I mean, but it was an incredibly courageous move on the part of some of the leaders to to recognize that and, and bless it and, and say it's okay. And the caveat that they placed upon us and the challenge they laid down for the instructors and the students is to make sure we do it right. Fly fishing guides have been the ones to really lead conservation movements. Bristol Bay is going to have a lot of tough management choices, uh, both when it comes to habitat and fish. And, you know, I think the more we can have these kids uh, thinking creatively and thinking about how to solve problems together, uh, that's going to be best for the future of Bristol Bay. I love doing it here 
because this is my home water. Obviously, the, the Naknek River is my home river, and it gives me the opportunity to share it with the kids. I don't know, I fell in love with it, and like I learned why everyone's so passionate about it. You know, I, over the past couple of years, I've worked with um, people from Washington, from just places down south, and you know, they come up here, and you know, catching you know, 12 grayling a day, a couple of rainbows is pretty normal over in Dillingham. And they're like, how many fish do you catch? What? And they're like looking at all the salmon. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is, a, this is a really special place, you know? Uh, Alaska to me has always been, you know, the stuff that's off the road system. And um, how those communities are sustained and, and what diverse opportunities they have. We need to make the most of what, what is available and certainly entry into the sport fishery is one of them. In my mind, that keeps it here. <laughs> You know, it, it helps the economy here and it helps sustain the people here. And you gotta consider what Alaska would be if we didn't have rural villages, Alaska wouldn't be Alaska. <laughs>